Right, we're going to set up a material from scratch to look like, I don't know, cracked grey stone. And I'm going to do it on a stone object that I'm going to get off the create shelf here. And the detection zone for selecting it's quite small. If you're on this side, it goes for tree. So I want the material to start completely from scratch. So I want to start with default grey. And if I want the stone to appear in default grey, I just need to hold the control key down while I click on the icon there. And that gives me my stone. I move the camera forward, down, and narrow the field of view. So I'm just looking at my stone and see what that looks like in the render before I start applying material. So there we go, that's our stone. In the material lab, if I want to see in the preview this stone, I need to use actual selection. It looks a bit small there. If I click on this uh, preview window and hold the left mouse button down, I can move it around, rotate it, and if I hold shift and control and the left mouse button and drag the mouse forward I can see a bit closer on the surface which is helpful. I'm going to use just one channel for this, channel A, and if I put a blob in there it'll randomly select something for me which is not very appropriate. And if I use shift while clicking on the name I can go into the presets in the texture library and I'm going to use rocks and grey stone as my starting point. It's selected object space mapping mode, which uh, it looks okay, but I'd rather use world space, then it'll be consistent throughout anything I put in the scene. Um, let's have a look inside the deep taste editor what we've got. Colour, no alpha, bump. I'll bring in the various filters, noise and phase. Check that phase is zero, because phase can uh, really slow textures down, and if you don't need it, we we'll start with zero phase and you can add something. It acts as a disruptor to this pattern. No filtering and I'm going to give it an alpha channel. So I know that it's getting its three channel output here and I'm going to use some specularity on the material so it looks like a hard material. So I'll try 35 specularity, give it the specular colour of... Do I want the specular colour to be of the stone or just white of the environment. We'll try that as the environment and I'm going to increase the halo size to 240. Right, so you can see the light spread a bit more. So that's working with the specular output of the sunlight and that's as an alternative to using reflection because you wouldn't expect unless the stone was wet to have hard reflections off it. So there's our pattern. It's not very bumpy so I think I'll add some bump because I've got bump output to work with. I'll give it 20 bump and in this uh, transformation tools I'm going to lower the output frequency so it's a bit uh, a bit lower and have a look at that so there's our starting point if I want to increase the uh, complexity of this without adding anything more in the deep taste editor I can do that by adding octaves and what that will do is that add a uh, lower frequency version of the same pattern over itself and how it's applied will determine on the be determined by the mode here and there's various modes to choose from we'll stick with standard for now so if I add three and four to three and four octaves I can then increase the frequency um, and double it for each added octave and it'll the pattern will remain the same but it'll appear to get more complex so there you go, it's, it's a bit more complexity in there, looks okay. So now I want to add some cracks. So back into the material editor, there will be a lot of going backwards and forwards because you really need to look in the main render view to appreciate what's going on in the pattern. Into the deep taste editor, I'll just drag and drop that into the second component which will activate it. Average seems like an appropriate blending mode to try out. I'll go into the noise filter here, you can see we're on stucco noise, that's where that was coming from. I'm going to change that to a stone cliff. Now, stone cliffs appeared here because that's the active uh, channel, but I didn't want it to appear there, so I'm going to select this channel and put it in here. And the reason for that is I'm going to try and use this using another blend mode to fill in the cracks I can create with this uh, noise to, with another pattern. So I'm just going to reduce the octaves now, and then I'll have to reduce the frequency so I can see what's going to be my crack effect there. OK, so those are going to be the cracks, but at the moment the filtering means that the crack transitions are quite soft. So if I go to Smooth Clip, you can see oh, well, by default it's already put harder transition edges in. And I can change the filter which modifies the size of the cracks. So we'll see how that looks now. 
whether we've got an appropriate. Right, okay. So by averaging, the bump effect of the main texture's gone down, and you can now see we've got the effect of these cracks wandering across the surface. So if I want to increase my bump effect, I can do that here, and then the, the cracks will look even deeper because of the bump. And now what I want to do is fill in these cracks with another texture. So it looks like the rock's been weathered away or something like that. So I'm going to use this again. Well, what I'll do is I'll drag this first one into the third component, and that will activate that. And then I'm going to select it and modify the material. I'm going to use, um, I don't know, a random continuous. That's giving me a noisy function. And it's selected maximum which is handy because it's already dropping it into the cracks for me just by chance. I'm going to use blend maximum so that it's not such a harsh transition as it fills this in and I'm going to choose a different colour for this. So I'll try and make a brownie colour. You, use, you can do that with red sometimes although brown doesn't strictly speaking exist on monitors I don't think. You can get the impression of brown or green. No. So that that's that's the colour that's going to fill in the gap if I can get something I like the look of, which isn't always easy. I often use my second monitor and pick the colours from the other side, but I'm trying to avoid doing that so you can see everything going off on this one screen. So um, let's have a look here. Octaves 4, I don't think I need that many. If I lower the octaves, the frequency of the pattern will increase, which is what I'm looking for, and it'll also uh, help with the render time. So at the moment we've got no filtering on that. If I add smooth clip I can sharpen it up. But if I add sign, I have, can have control, I'll just reset that to a standard level, over t two things. The intensity of the pattern there, as you can see, is changing. I quite like that introduction to green, could look a bit mossy. And also by altering the height, you can see it's filling in or emptying out the cracks. So I can just have it on the transition there where it's spilling out of the cracks because of this, this is like a height map that the bump's working with but it also by blending maximum minimum it allows depending which you chose because if you choose minimum it'll reverse the situation so uh, with maximum it is looking like it's filling these cracks in but they didn't have to look like cracks because you can always reverse the bump effect here so let's have a look how that's turned out so possibly I want this to be a little bit more high frequency and to fall further into the cracks. So back into the material lab, if I want this a higher frequency, I can just increase the value there with that global control and drop it further into the cracks, lower the filter height here. I'll just change this so that it has a little bit more green in. A lot of it's experimentation, you just have to keep trying things until you're happy with the result. So that's, that's not too bad. These these cracks are a little bit broad, I think. So I might go in here and uh, have a look at this noise function. See if we can change it. Well, there are other ones to experiment with, but uh, obviously, let's see. Some would be appropriate. We could do sparse random lines, and that would perhaps be less spread out. Well, let's try that one then. That's another one that resembles cracks. So okay, well that, that I think perhaps is a little bit more appropriate Al although I'm going to lower the frequency of this pattern now because there's too many lines over the surface so I'll lower that here and then if I want those to be narrower I have to increase this value in the filter so you can see it's pushing that into there right and that should uh, have reduced the number of cracks and made it finer so just experiment with a bit more of these filters. Let's see what we can do. We'll try and maximum on its own. We'll see how that varies. It looks like I'm going to have to lower this filter height there because it's spilling out. So I'll try and see which one I like better. Actually, I think I quite like that. So there is then a, a basic, um, quickly constructed material just using one channel. And uh, the final thing then is to light it because the lighting also affects the appearance of the material. As I say, we've used some specularity. Um, if, I, if I move this around a bit, perhaps tilt it, I don't know which way I'm going to do it, so it's sticking up so you can see 
the, the, the lighting at the moment is default so we've got these very dark areas and the colour of the lighting's quite um, quite monochrome. If we go into the Skylab image based lighting, use sky, use sky dome, I only use sky here, create a little HDRI, lower the quality, select render in scene, looks a bit dark, so increase the effect output, then we can get some bluish light arriving from this quickly generated sky. Uh, I'll re-enable the sunlight because that'll give us some output for the specular and change the sun to, I don't know, an orangey colour, maybe not that orange. Hold the Alt key down, click on the colour swatch if you want that to to compensate for the blue. And uh, as uh, as the HDRI image produces very little specular output, I might as well set that to zero. And then I can move this round, and we'll have a look if that's made any difference to the appearance of the stone. Probably a bit too much light arriving, so I'll reduce the effect and rotate the stone so we can see the surface and move the light round so it's uh, coming from one side so there you go, I mean uh, just just adding quickly some uh, some more light sources changes the overall appearance and um, obviously placing it in context helps as well so that's at the end of the tutorial really, that's just a quick basic grey stone material with some sort of cracks and another sort of weathered mossy effect inside the stone. So uh, give that a go. I hope that's helpful and you'll uh, you'll go on to experiment more with the material editor and uh, the deep texture editor which is quite absorbing but uh, as you can see a little bit fiddly to work with.